49th straight home opening victory. How about that, folks? The starting five for Billy Gillespie's Texans include Freddie Hicks, Shamir Bogues, Todd Small. And speaking of small, it's a small lineup. Montre Gibson and Shakur Daniel are the starting five, and they don't have a guy above 6'6 in the lineup. Now, for the Kansas Jayhawks, same starting five we saw against the Spartans of Michigan State. That includes Christian Brown, Dewan Harris, Remy Martin from Arizona State, Ochai Abaji coming off that career-high 29, and David McCormick, who only had two rebounds in the game, was just four for 11 from the field. So all eyes tonight on McCormick. And Coach Self was telling us before the game, look, they want to play small. We want to play big. So who is going to force the action here tonight? Yeah, it's going to have to be Kansas and David McCormick. They're going to play through him in the post, but he also has to be a presence on the glass and protecting the basket. And the opening tip goes for the guys in white, the Jayhawks. Wait a minute. we got immediate action here. I think it's a shot clock. Or no, is it a foul inside? And it was the shot clock. So the shot clock was stuck at 30, and it still is. Now, now it goes down to 25, now back to 30. So wait a minute. Let's get it. Let's get it organized, fellas. Never want to see anything like this to start off the game, particularly when you win the tip, <laughs> kind of killing and cutting into the momentum. It kind of dies the crowd down a little bit. Yeah. Hopefully they'll be able to get it back. Interesting. All right. Now we got the shot clock and the game clock all synchronized. Jamel Spearman. One of the officials here tonight, along with Ray Natilli and Brett Smith. Here's Remy Martin. Inside, Brown. Double teamed. Nothing there. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. They'll reset. Here it is. We we'll see high pressure, high activity from Charlton State. Something they talked about in the scout report early. Got to put it up. Remy Martin, no. Brown saves it. Out of bounds. McCormick's got it. And he's fouled. Nice shot. Great multiple effort. David McCormick did not secure that first rebound, but his hand on the basketball kept it in play to where they could secure the possession back. Now we've got a foul back to Jayhawks basketball. Dub, one of the things that Jayhawks did not do well against the Spartans was rebounding. They were out-rebounded by seven in that game. Yeah, kind of typical of a Big Ten team, very physical. Their length bothered us a little bit, but we have to continue, continue, to, continue to control the glass tonight. Pass inside. Double team came quick. They knocked it out of bounds. It'll stay with KU. Winner! Winner! 11 now on the shot clock. Gillespie's team did a good job scouting that inbounds play. Martin thought about a long three. Swing it around. Abaji for three. McCormick keeps it alive. And now here come the Texans. Good bounce pass inside. And it's Shamir Bogues with the first two points of the game. Something we can't let long miss shots create opportunities for this fast-paced Charlton State team. Harris has his pocket pick. Carlton will want to slow it down. Their game against Stanford, they led throughout against the Cardinal and then lost as Stanford went on quite a tear to end the game and won 62-50. But they'd like to keep this game in the 50s if they could. They really would, and they do a great job with time of possession, uh, moving the ball from side to side, taking late shot clock shots like we're seeing here. But great job, Tristan Brown, challenging that shot, getting a block from behind. McCormick. There it is. Definitely what we want to see there. Punching it inside, taking advantage. That's 6'10 over 6'6. It's got to be a bucket every time. Especially when he gets two feet in the paint, right? Absolutely. Both teams playing man to man. McCormick holds his ground. Nice. An air ball. Great job walling up there. David being disciplined, staying down on his feet. Brown, good adjustment at the rim. Solid defense leading the transition baskets. We'll take it every time. And it 
come back the other way and a nice move by Bogues who has all four of the points for the Texans. See if they try to get it back to McCormick here. They do. And he goes in with the left hand. Would have counted had it gone. He'll go to the line to shoot two. All right, we're seeing the early play from KU, Wayne, and they are trying to get that ball inside to David McCormick and take advantage of his almost half a foot size advantage. Yeah, it is, and it's leading to good shot opportunities for the Jayhawks on offense. On that one, we saw that attract four purple shirts there. Let's look for David McCormick to be able to fan it out of the post uh, for an open three in the next few possessions. And he was shooting the free throw so well, went just two for five against Michigan State, misses his first one here. Missed them both. Poor Daniel runs the point. He's a 6 6 point. Yeah, going to be an interesting matchup with Keen and Remy Martin all night. Somehow that pass got through. In and out, no good. Good look from Gibson, but it doesn't go. Baji. Oh, good no look pass. Another one. Swinging it around the perimeter. Abaji, good ball fake. Oh, what a move. And he tried the dipsy do underneath, and it dipsy don't. And that'll be a charge. Excellent job, Dewan Harris, sprinting back after the missing transition, getting his feet set, taking it straight to the chest. And this is something that Coach Self loves for his players to do, to sacrifice their body. Uh, emphasis for the rules uh, for this upcoming season, making sure the guys can, can can move their feet, but actually have possession of the space that they have. Juan did a great job getting the charge there. I would think Coach Gillespie is real happy right now. Four minutes in, a 4-4 score. He's got the pace of the game the way he wants it. And so far, KU is not really taking advantage of their size. Brown has been a presence, but KU's tied at the first break. Pretty college in Texas. Here he is with the Texans of Tarleton State. Only their second year in Division I. They're in the Western Athletic Conference from Stephenville, Texas, which is just southwest of Fort Worth. But it is great to see Billy Gillespie back in Division I where he belongs. Absolutely. He is a ball coach. Started out as a high school coach, been successful mostly every stop that he's been in. It's great to see him back at the D1 level and in the field house. Of course, he was. Uh... That's the perfect out of bounds play to Abaji on the alley oop. Well, let's be, of course, I was going to say, was on Bill Selfstaff once upon a time. And the famous story of Gillespie, you know, getting the job and saying, Coach, just send me some T-shirts. I'll go out recruiting. Hadn't even come to campus yet. Oh, yeah, ready to get after it there. And that Ali that we saw there to Abadji, prototypical after timeout for Bill Self. Let's throw it up top and get the fans engaged. So after three straight misses by KU, they get back on the board. Remy Martin. Good spin move. Brown. Nice rebound. McCormick, and he's fouled on the play. Let's go back to just, I mean, it's always fun to watch these, right? Yeah, it certainly is. It's always fun to watch, but it's particularly easy when you have an athlete like Ochai Agbaje that can go up and grab it anywhere at any time. You just throw it to the corner and let him go. But I love the pick set by McCormick to set that free. Absolutely, and Juan is such a good facilitator. He put it on time, on target for the good finish. Turnover by Harris. Three turnovers already for KU. And that's what Gillespie's teams do. They really play hard. A block by McCormick. And then as he's falling out of bounds, Daniel had his hands on the ball. There's a turnover for the Texans. David playing with the president, sensing the dribble penetration, coming to help Christian Brown and using his length and athleticism to get that shot out of here. Now you need to reward him on offense, right? Got yeah, got, got, feed him. Let's play, feed right? him. Yeah, feed him. Martin. KU so far not finding the range from three-point land. McCormick. Is fouled again, I believe, and this one on Freddie Hicks. 
That'll be already the fifth team foul on the Texans and the second on Hicks. And this is offensive productivity for David McCormick. Maybe not by means of scoring, but drawing fouls. Jayhawk should be in the bonus here pretty soon. Well, good backdoor play. Harris almost walked with it. McCormick, one quick step. Abaji swings it around. Really good defense by Charlton State showing their athleticism and aggressive being able to close out. Force turnovers and steal the possession. Yeah, Shamir Bogues got a hand on Remy Martin's drive. I like the way the Texans recover defensively. Absolutely, they have athletes, and of course, Billy Gillespie's team show no fear. A lot of these guys uh, taking the long path to the Division One route. Several of them coming from Ranger Junior College. Man, those guys have a grit about them uh, that really shows on the defensive end. I'm talking to Coach Gillespie before the game, he said, "We're not real good yet. Only our second year of Division One. We'll get some better athletes as time goes on. Athletes like McCormick who can block shots like that." And he changed that one, even though it went. Man, you hate to see a block shot like that go to waste by not securing the possession. We got to get those types of 50 50 balls. Martin left wide open. Martin scored 15 the other night against the Spartans, and all 15 came in the second half. Well, we know he's capable, and I'm actually glad he's not waiting to the second half of this game to get <laughs> yeah. engaged. Hopefully, we'll be seeing more of that uh, before the half. Exactly. Well, McCormick is all over the court right now. That shot short. Martin with a rebound. He had six of those against the Spartans the other night. Brown turned down the three. That has to be a bump. It is. And the foul here on Shakur Daniel. Christian Brown laboring from the three-point line yeah. early here in the season. Uh, a great way to help aid that is to attack the basket, get fouled, and see the ball go in from the free throw line. Hopefully he knocks down these two. You know what I like about Christian? The other day at Madison Square Garden, he airballed his first couple of three-point attempts. So instead of really taking many more, in fact, he didn't take any more, he said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to play good defense and I'm going to rebound. And he got eight rebounds in that game, and he really made his presence felt on the defensive end. Christian Brown, consummate teammate, a yeah. Jayhawk at heart, loves to be here. Not only that, but even in that bad performance in the locker room, he was a guy that was the most celebratory, not for the team win, but for Ochag Baji's individual performance. Yeah. Yep. Right now, Coach Self having a chat with him. And the Jayhawks enjoying their biggest lead of the game right now. From the wing, no good by Gerante Hopkins. That'll be a shove. Didn't quite see it there. Couldn't recognize if he got his feet set. Looks like the officials talking to Remy Martin for yeah. maybe tossing the ball towards the baseline. A little too aggressively, probably less upset with the call and more obsessed uh, or more upset uh, with, with, with with that play. Maybe a little of both. <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe upset with the call too. And himself. Yeah, and himself. Got a hand in there. Goes out of bounds. It'll stay with the Texans. This is about that time that Jayhawks should begin to, to distance themselves as they're getting a little bit deep into the Charlton State bench. And we well, had a look at Bobby Pettiford, the freshman. Also, Jalen Coleman Lands has checked in for KU. How good did our freshman look earlier in the week? Oh man, no kidding. Oh, Baji picking up where he left off in New York. Yeah, you, you know, I think Bobby Pettiford is going to be one of those guards that KU is going to love. He's probably a four-year guy. Look at him. Look how tough he is with the ball. I just uh, say that he lost the handle, but he didn't lose the ball. Well, I love what you said about four-year guys because we have the luxury of being able to see some four-year guys at his position really develop in guys like uh, Frank and Devontae. All right, we're going to take a timeout. 
but Remy Martin, welcome to KU. First time of the Jayhawks on that team. Fell in love with Nick Bradford. That was oh, Nick Bradford's uh, gotcha. coming out party there. His, yep. his freshman year. And uh, uh, he's a Hall of Fame coach now. High school coach in Arkansas now. Is that right? Lightfoot couldn't get it to go. Tried to get his own rebound and missed that. Now on the floor. And we got a foul. Actually, no, not a foul, but we're going to give the ball to Kansas on the turnover as you see Jalen Coleman lands coming in. He struggled a little bit from three-point range the other night, but boy, he is a guy that can light it up. Yeah, he's filled it up. Knows what it's like to fill it up in this building as he, uh, <laughs> he hit us up for about 20 points with his uh, career at Iowa State last year. He's been around the block, too, hasn't he? Lightfoot, double teamed in the low post, scores anyway. Nice job, strong finish, good post speed there by Ochai Baji and Mitch finishing strong over the defense. By the way, the Texans started the game two for four. They're two for ten since then. Lightfoot tried to catch up to Montre Gibson, but couldn't. Montre Gibson, one of their top scorers, uh, kind of an unorthodox, old-school type game. Uh, did a great job getting downhill. The Hawks are going to have to limit his scoring capacity uh, for the rest of the night. Ooh, a guarded three from Coleman Lance. Man, one of the things I love about Jalen Coleman Lance, his elevation on his jump shot is uh, one of the best that I've seen, which allowed him to shoot over the defender even though it was challenged. Nine-point lead for the Jayhawks. Be a foul on Lightfoot, and this, and this is what we brought Jalen Coleman lands in here to do: pull up off the dribble, great elevation, great form. One, two, three. Well, when you can stretch the floor like that, and then you have the inside presence, you know who really benefits from that? Are you big guys? The bigs, yeah. The big. I mean, you get the guys that can hit from the outside. The bigs have more room, right? It does, and it creates lots of space uh, there in the interior. I actually think Jalen Coleman lands is a better shooter off the bounce than he is uh, a catch and shoot, kind of like Ochai or Christian Brown. Well, the Jayhawks are spreading things around. Six different players from Kansas have scored in this game. Only two different Texans have scored. Joseph Yesifu is in the game. A little backdoor. Pettiford. Wow, is he tough. It's great job. Good court awareness by Pettiford and feeling Carlton State crowd. That passing lane. Mitch read it. Got behind their head on the back door with a dynamic and one finish. What is the key to scoring when you have contact like that? Well, it's to think score first, contact second. A lot of guys make their focus on the contact, hoping to draw the foul before mm -hmm. they score. I thought Bob did a great job of focusing on the corner of that backboard, scoring first, contact second, and he gets an extra point. So just keep your eyes on the rim. That's right. Get the contact. Think about scoring that Play thing through first. Man, good, good. Bogues lost the handle on the way to the hoop. It was knocked out by KU. It'll stay with the Texans. By the way, there's a first meeting between these two teams. You can imagine Tarleton State coming in here. Like, you've never played in a place this big. Hey, and it's not going to get any easier for them. They've got Gonzaga scheduled. They've got oh. Michigan scheduled. Yeah. They were at Stanford earlier. They play the Shockers of Wichita State next. They played North Dakota State. You think, ah, oh, that's not so big. No, they were in the tournament last year. Great job by Yesifu staying in front. That's a two-pointer, no. Look at Pettiford get up for the rebound. Abaji, good ball fake. And two. Wow. That is an elite next level move. Why? Well, in years past, Ochai is so poor at getting all the rebounds. We're seeing gang rebounding yeah. by Bobby Pettifer, by Remy Martin, and that's what it's going to take. It's everyone's job and responsibility to control the glass. Bobby's got four rebounds. That'll be a travel. Careless turnover by Bogues. That'll drive Billy Gillespie nuts. 
especially coming out of a timeout. You never want to come out of a timeout, Gillespie drawing some things up and mm -hmm. waste the play call with the turnover. Yesifu gets it inside Abaji with the left hand. Oh, what can he do right now? I think now? he got fouled there. That very likely could have been an and one, but it's great to see him play physically to use that NBA body in the finish in traffic. Texans have been reduced to playing more one on one basketball. Shot goes up at the buzzer by Noah McDavid. And McDavid made a tough shot. That was pretty solid defense for the duration of the shot clock. Hey, they got players too, and they'll make shots. Abaji, he's feeling it now. Oh, thought that was good. He was right on target, just a hair short. Back to small three-pointer no way off But the inside position by Gibson Yeah, a little bit lazy on Pettiford's uh, Pettiford stance there got to get the rotation rebounding on the inside weak side Oh, yes, if Pettiford beats him oh, We got a timeout Kansas rolling right now and especially inside to Obama. And a guy as experienced as Ocha has developed that field during his time here at Kansas, and it's mm -hmm. great to see him utilize that in his senior campaign. Yeah, it is. Good for him. I mean, I think it did him a world of good to make himself eligible for the NBA, learn what he needed to learn from the people there telling him what he needed to work on, and boy, did he ever. He worked so hard in the offseason, and you can see everything paying off now. And sometimes that can actually be a detriment to guys, Dave, yeah. because they focus too much on the things uh, that might be considered a weakness for them at the next level. That hasn't been the case for Otai, knowing what he's good at while developing some of his weaknesses. That was a two for Bogues. By the way, KU has eight assists in their last 10 field goals, whereas Tarleton, remember I was saying they're playing more one-on-one. -on -one. They have just one now. Brown has it tipped at the basket. Good recovery again by the Texans. Great job threading the needle there by Pettif. I would have liked yeah. to see Juan finishing on the same side of the rim instead of the reverse layup mm -hmm. and trying to find Brown on the pass off. Well, sometimes Harris is almost too unselfish, right? Yeah. Now they left Bogues, and that'll be a timeout by Coach Self. You don't leave them. The Jayhawks led by as many as 13 in this contest. What's the advantage for KU to have basically two points? And Harris and Martin both in the lineup at the same time. Well, I think it's not just two point guards, but really two different types of players. We know that Remy Martin is a playmaker, a scorer. Uh, Dewan is more of a facilitator. Both those guys uh, have great speed, and so I think they can be effective in the lineup together. I can remember Coach Self's first year, and he goes, I get so tired of the labels one and two and all that. They're guards, and I want my guards to be guards. And so it's certainly, I mean, this is the way he loves to play with two guys that can handle. He'd like all guys to be able to handle. Martin thought about it and then said, nah, I don't think so. And now he's going to drive in. And the follow from K.J. Adams. K.J. Adams played the least of the freshmen in Madison Square Garden against Michigan State. I'm not convinced that he didn't have the most impact because of plays like that. Yeah. Energy effort guy. He's a four-star recruit out of Austin, Texas. Brown got a piece of that one. And a good play by Geronte Hopkins to throw it off of Vochak. Remy Martin getting down here, late shot clock. This right here is just one, two. That's just going after and getting the basketball. Big guys not just waiting for the guards to pass you it, but to go create offensive possessions for yourself by attacking the glass. KJ did a great job on that. Great way to make an impression on Coach Self is to go and rebound. Yeah, 
no basket. Shot clock violation. Oh, man, if there was point five seconds more on that shot clock and both those guys got lifted, we could be seeing some substitution right now. <laughs> you see that finger pointing again? <laughs> <laughs> Shot clock down to five. Martin. Oh, man. He creates from the weirdest angles. Pretty poor offensive execution on that as the ball was sticking. Wasn't moving side to side very well. But, hey, you're going to have those, and you're going to need to have a playmaker like Remy Martin when it gets late in the shot clock. Just go get a bucket. Coach Self not happy with the way that the Texans were playing defense. And then an offensive foul on Tarleton State. Let's go back to that off offensive possession. Yeah, very limited ball and body movement. I think one of the things Remy Martin's going to have to develop in is not holding the basketball and dribbling the air out early in the possession. But, hey, you're going to have to have a guy do that late shot clock. Not ideal, not something we want every possession, but you're going to have to get those occasionally during the duration of the season. Good hands by Adams. Three-pointer no good, and the rebound by Hopkins. Five minutes to go, first half. No, one of the things that the Jayhawks need to do here this last four minutes, this isn't score more points, but to put together a string of stops. Uh, that doesn't count. We need to play without fouling. Love that Dwan Harris tried to take his second charge of the game, but it starts with staying between the ball and the basket, guarding your man and not letting Tarleton State get paint touches like they've been able to consistently do uh, this half. Haven't quite been able to convert, which is why they're down, but still within striking distance. Only the third team foul on the Jayhawks this half. Tarleton State has eight. Turning to Tarleton. I actually think this is a pretty physical game. Yeah. Seeing some hand checking out there that I haven't seen since 1990. <laughs> Gibson, one of those guys from Ranger College, and it came along with Gillespie. High horns, ball screen action there. KJ Adams laid a solid screen there. All the way to Obaji, just a little bit short. And good effort again by KJ Adams inside on the glass. He gets fouled from behind, and we got a timeout. The Jayhawks continue to keep the Texans at arm's length. Love is when you think of his numbers. He's won 523 games as a Jayhawk coach, 729 overall in his Hall of Fame career. But I love this stat. He's 277 and 16 at Allen Fieldhouse. Only 16 losses in 18 years. Very impressive. A lot of numbers you can throw out there about Coach Self. My favorite is right, right here. Lifetime, meaning lifetime contract that he just got under yeah. uh, over the summer. <laughs> KJ Adams can't hit the free throw. The free throws aren't falling tonight for the Jazz like they did at Madison Square Garden. Just two for six after going 19 for 24 from the line in New York. Ooh, three guys have scored for the Texans, led by Shamir Bogues, number three, with 13 points. Montre Gibson, he has seven. So 20 points from just two guys. Baji quickly doubled. Pettiford, tough shot. He'll go to the line, though. And this is going to start taking its toll on the Texans. They're starting to get some guys in foul trouble. And they don't have a real deep squad. Yeah, not a, not a deep squad by any stretch of the imaginations, but it's actually to their advantage if the Jayhawks cannot shoot from the free throw line at a higher clip. Yep, Daniel, his third foul. Pettiford, he is now two for two for the year. He hit his only free throw the other night. And the 
correct myself. He actually missed a free throw earlier in this game. So he is now two for three from the line here tonight. And the Jayhawks back up by nine. Love this right here, KJ Adams. Man, look at that stance. Look at him guarding the basketball. Shakur, their point guard. Man, if KJ Adams is able to guard one through four positions, he's going to work himself into this rotation yeah, yeah. at a higher rate. Couldn't quite get there. Small couldn't quite find the handle or he had a layup. And that was a foul from behind. This one will go against Gibson. And that'll be his third. So you got three on Gibson and three on Daniel. That does not bode well for Coach Gillespie, two of his starters with three fouls each. And this does affect the flow of the game with uh, lots of fouls, lots of stoppage of play, uh, which is going to make it all the more important. Knocking down these free throws, controlling the tempo on both ends of the court, especially going here into the halftime. Well, Kansas has responded with a nice little run of their own after that 8-0 run by the Texans. And the Jayhawks back up by 11. I think it really starts down here on this end, starting with stops, stringing some of those together, then finishing out on the offensive end. Coach Self has been defensive-minded. That's been such a part of his DNA at every stop, every coaching stop that he's had, and certainly wants to see that developed in this year's Jayhawk team. Well, no one has to be careful, right? I mean, with this much depth, you, you've got a lot of fouls to give. Yeah, you do. It's key to play without fouling, but you want to keep guys uh, aggressive, uh, attacking the ball, both offensively and defensively. And it's nice to see these guys not shy back. I mean, look at the number of challenges at the rim we've seen uh, for the Jayhawks, not just David McCormick, but at every stop. That's two baskets by the Texans right as the shot clock was expiring. That's a tough play there by Gibson. Pettiford. Ochai and one. He just makes it look easy right now. Well, it looks really easy when on that side of the court, you've got two extremely seasoned guys. Christian Brown flashing up at the elbow, catching it with the pocket pass to Ochai, finishing over traffic. You know, one of the things that Jay Billis said the other night on the ESPN broadcast was that Ochai Abaji, if he can average six to eight trips to the free throw line per game, it's going to make him even better. You agree? Well, it's not just the trips, man. you got to make sure that ball gets in the hole. I know he's a little upset uh, missing that, uh, that and one opportunity, but looks like we'll have another one as the Jayhawks take the ball out of bounds. All right, so Ochai Baji right now leading the way for the Jayhawks with 11 points. Baji turns the corner again, making it look easy. And behind him, Montre Gibson has to be careful. He can't foul because he already has three. So the Jayhawks exploiting that and then back matching their biggest lead of the game. Gibson scores at the other end. Martin just kept working his way toward the basket. Adams trying to get that rebound and had it forced away from him. Now Gibson again, they lose track of Gibson, the man with the ball, and he's able to score. So Gibson now with 14 points to lead all scores. And Brown works himself inside. Under a minute to go, first half. Door play. Brown let his guy go. And an easy basket for Bogues. So Bogues with 15, Gibson with 14. 29 of the 31 points for the Texans from just two guys.
Martin. Brown, good rebound. And stick back. No, it doesn't go. And Martin actually tipped it away from Adams at the buzzer, and that's the way the first half will come to a close. Win. Well, it's Tarleton State to have the ball first here in the second half. David, glaring statistic to me looking at him at halftime is points in the paint. Teams are tied. Now, you would yes. think that Tarleton State would not be as effective scoring in the paint as the Kansas Jayhawks because of their size. But, man, they're really able to attack, get downhill, and really create havoc by getting paint touches off dribble penetration. It's going to be important for the Hawks to limit that. How much attention will Gibson and Bogues get since they scored almost all of their points? Well, I mean, they have to have that type of attention, right? Shot clock down to five. This is where Coach Seth wants him to be better. I would have counted had it gone. A foul here by Harris. And that will send Montre Gibson to the line. He's stocky, isn't he? A 5'11", solid frame. Really solid frame, but seasoned player. Pretty crafty with yeah. being able to get and create his own shot, especially at his size, but... Uh, head to head against Dewan. Dewan's got to take more pride in making sure keeping him out of the paint. I thought it was a pretty good wall up there. I'm surprised there was a foul there, but uh, especially as physical as the ball game was in the first half, it'll be to see. It'll be interesting to see if the officials try to adjust uh, that a little bit in the second half. Gibson now with 16 points to lead all scorers. That pressure there designed to just take some time off the clock. And lob it inside. Obaji. Again, great body control. Now 15 for Obaji. Again, Jayhawks got confused defensively. And allowed Bogues to be all by his lonesome. Yeah, completely a blown assignment. A lot of ball watching. Uh, created by the dribble weave that they did early in that possession. And they found the open man for an easy layup. Brown for three. Let's hope that gets him going again. I think he was upset with himself for losing his man defensively. And he came back and got it right back with a three. Three-pointer no good. Martin pushes it up. Harris leaves it for Abaji. That might have brought the house down. Great pitch ahead there by Remy finding Harris. Harris finding Abaji not being able to convert. Hicks. Nothing there. Bogues. Nothing there. Hicks again. Nothing there. That should be an easy layup. Yeah, Mr. Bunny there. David's upset with himself. He knows that should have been two points. He rushed it. He didn't need to rush it. Buckets like that are important, not just because they're easy, but when you string three possessions together defensively on one end, stopping a team like this, you want to make it count on the offensive end. Now that's a tie-up. McCormick brought the ball back down after he rebounded it, and... Well, Jayhawks will get the possession because of the arrow, but would have been nice for him to keep the ball up. Yeah, Tarleton State active and aggressive, uh, both out on the perimeter guarding, but also in gang rebounding and trying to steal extra possessions. And Remy Martin threw that one up to the Beware of the Fog sign. I wasn't sure Ocha was going to be able to get that. <laughs> well, pay heed. <laughs> Indeed. Wow. Man, man. 
I couldn't jump over a tuna can. It's nice to see someone that can jump. And again, too easy inside for the Texans. Brown with authority. Back to back above the rim finishes. Feeling the crowd here in Allen Fieldhouse. They like to see that kind of excitement. Let's see if the Jayhawks can turn that energy into getting a big stop here on the defensive end, which is just as important. Tough shot for Daniel. Another lob inside. McCormick that time did settle. And he gets the two. Good look from Harris. Not an easy finish by any stretch of the imagination. It's going to be important for Dave to get easy angle looks, but also he's going to have to finish in traffic just like that, especially with a swarming defense like Tarleton State's been showing. Gibson whips a pass inside. And a nice move by Small, and we got a timeout by Coach Gillespie. Jayhawks with five field goals this half, and they have an assist on all five. So the Jayhawks up by one more than they were at the half. They're up by nine right now. Pettiford checks in for the Jayhawks. The Texans find a little bit of token pressure just to kind of get the Jayhawks out of rhythm. I think it's been working. We haven't seen elite offensive execution. I think we've just had better players getting scores. We got another quick timeout. As the Jayhawks still lead by nine. Simeon, I'm Dave Armstrong with the Jayhawks up 50 to 41. Don't forget uh, Jayhawk football still going on and Dave Stewart along with Ben Heaney for the pregame show. Jayhawks take on the Texas Longhorns. Pre-game starts at 6.30 Central Time. Excuse me, 6 o'clock Central. Game is 6.30. Yep. So the pre-game show with Dave and Ben starts at 6 o'clock Saturday evening. And don't forget, we'll be back on the air here for Jayhawk basketball against Stony Brook next Thursday at 7 o'clock. And the pre-game there starts at 6.30. And just look at the swarming defense of the Texans causing the Jayhawks to catch the ball out of a scoring area and really labor that possession. But Ochai yeah. bailed him out. 19 him out. now. Willed, 19. willed that basketball to go in. You know, I think the Jayhawks have two guys that can score late if everything else breaks down. Obaji and Remy Martin. Those two guys, I think, are going to have huge impact. Martin. Extra pass, Pettiford really was throwing that up for McCormick, wasn't he? I think that was a lob. I think he should have made one extra pass to Christian Brown in the corner for a rhythm three rather than trying to force the issue. But look, David's been laboring on offense a little bit, but there's no doubt about it. He's been a presence defensively. I think he's got his third block shot for the night and has altered several more. Well, he draws a crowd. There's no question about that. There was one play earlier in the game where there were four purple jerseys around it. So that's obviously a point of emphasis for Coach Gillespie. Shot clock down to six. Martin. That's what I mean. That's a goal thing. That's what I mean. Those guys can create when everything else goes down. And that's one of the things that pressuring teams yeah. allow to themselves to give up. They play so high up the court. They're so aggressive in the passing lane. But if you have an on-the-ball defender that you can get your shoulders by, you're going to have opportunities to finish layups at the rim like we've seen. Had his head on a swivel. McCormick's got another rebound. Here comes Martin. Surveying the court. No look. Brown. And that'll be an offensive charge on Brown. 
Really, that's more where Martin gave him a ball in a spot that wasn't good. It really is yeah. true. That that was actually Remy's turnover, uh, in my opinion. And he's got to be more court and spatial aware and not put Christian uh, in that difficult situation to giving him in the uh, the ball in the place where he's not able to, 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 to do a lot with. That's like the quarterback throwing it across the middle when the linebacker's right there. He's going to kill his receiver. True. And Remy knew it immediately. Gibson, no. Brown, good rebound. Tipped out. It'll stay with KU. Man, I'm going to commend David just on his defensive effort. You know, it's a tough matchup for yeah. him having yeah. to guard uh, someone like that that's uh, unorthodox and stepping, pulling him away from the basket. He's shown some. Great defensive possessions with the stance and his feet securing rebounds. Dub, let me ask you this. You're a big guy. When they throw it into McCormick and he gets double or triple team, you feel that as a big guy, don't you? Does, does you automatically think, well, I don't need to score. I could, there's got to be somebody open, right? Well, there is a feel. Um, certainly you feel the man that's guarding you. You have to know that in this type of situation, they're probably going to send two, maybe even three. Uh, at David, mm -hmm. but if you catch the basketball with two feet in the paint, especially below that charge circle, you got to go up and either score that bucket or draw a foul. Right. So it doesn't matter how many guys are on you. You're going to score, especially when those guys are small. That, that was my preference. That was you. <laughs> well, my preference too when you had the ball, because <laughs> you can score, my man. You can score. I think you were, you had one of the best shots I've ever seen, honestly, from the short corner. I mean, that was like your spot. David impacting the game right there on the defensive end. And I appreciate that compliment, Dave. That short corner jump shot isn't something that you develop overnight. But, hey, I want to give credit to the KU coaching staff. And actually, even Norm Roberts was yeah. one of my position coaches while I was a player here. Yeah. And stature-wise, he doesn't come across like someone that would be able to coach that position uh, at a very effective rate. But he's one of the top assistants in the country, has been for years. And I think he's doing a good job with this post group as well. What a save by Coleman Lambs. Another ball fake. Three. Wow! What a possession for Coleman Land! Wow! I don't think I've wanted anyone to make a three so much. Rewarding that type of effort, Dave. Diving out of bounds to save the basketball. Being aware enough to hop back up with urgency, get the basketball back, shot fake, and knock it down. Man, great to see a guy rewarded like that for that type of effort. Harris got a hand in on that one, but it went right to Small. With that three-pointer from Coleman Lands, the Jayhawks had their biggest lead of the game. Right now it's at 13. Obaji. Harris, he was open. Trying to force a pass inside, not good. Paul Milan trying to force the issue a little bit on that one. Late shot clock, a post entry feed off a bounce pass. Not ideal, especially when David is calling for the ball up top. You guys don't like bounce passes as much as they do lobs, right? Especially yeah. not in traffic. Yeah, yeah. Now well, Bogues with the score. Under 11 to go. Harris, wide open look. That was halfway down and back out again. And a bunny, and the Jayhawks have it. Coach back to Harris, and he loses it. <laughs> Holy cow! A lot happened, and yet nothing happened.
A lot happened, though, on that possession from Coleman Lance. The save. He did here. One of the things that Coach Self has mentioned about this team is he knows that we're experienced. He knows that we can score, but he wants to see how tough these guys are. That's a toughness play right there. Coleman lands again. Great job with Wendy Martin getting a paint touch. Court awareness, knowing where Coleman lands is going to be and finding him for the rhythm three. By the way, he's two for two from three-point land in this game. Tough shot. Well guarded by Brown. Martin pulls up. Nope, that won't go. Long rebound. Brown. That was halfway down and back out. Lightfoot trying to keep it alive. And it will go out of bounds and belong to the Texans. Great effort by them. And I love the spark and the burst of energy that Remy Mark could be sometimes. Probably forced the issue on that shot there uh, in transition. But at least he's playing with some uh, some excitement, some energy, which is which is needed in lulls that we've been experiencing. Doug, do you think a guy like Remy Martin, he can sense when it's time for the knockout punch? Well, he's certainly been known to, to apply that uh, during his time at Arizona State, and we've even felt that uh, on our end as we got a chance to, to go against them a little bit earlier, and hopefully he would apply that here with the Kansas uniform on. As we said earlier in the broadcast, he kind of brings a certain swag to this team. I like, you, how, I like how he sticks his nose in there and rebounds yeah, as well. And yeah. You can feel a little entitled to get a shot when you're a little guard like that, getting rebounds, stealing possessions. That was tipped, so it's not over and back. And that'll be a foul on Lightfoot on a moving pick. Probably only a matter of time, too. We got one of those with as many ball screens as we set. We're probably going to see a few of those mm -hmm. moving screen fouls called. Didn't Gillespie remind you of a coach that like should have been in Hoosiers or something, you know, black and white movie? And you know, he's a throwback, isn't he? Is he? You think that you're kind of looking at the comb over and you're feeling the old school? I don't know, man. He's looking like a <laughs> he's looking like a pretty modern coach the way he's got this Tarleton State team yeah, playing. Uh, yeah, he does. I mean, it starts on the defensive end and then goes the other way. And it'll be a foul called on. Let's see who was that? And small. That'll be his third. Maybe if Gillespie was in the traditional all-black suit that, that coaches have worn. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. Yeah, I kind of yeah. like the casual look, though. Man. I'm, I'm kind of buying it too. I like it for the announcer. Yeah, it keeps Whoa. us casual. Hey, no way I'd be here next to you, Dave, if y'all made me suit and tie up. Really? No way. No, no. You'd look good though, coat and tie. You'd look good no matter what. Well, Remy Martin hits the free throws, and the Jayhawks now. Enjoying a 16-point advantage, their biggest lead of the game. Good move by Shakur Daniel. Yeah, pretty good by the Texans running a false motion opposite of the basketball. Forcing the help to come late by Mitch Lightfoot couldn't quite get there in time to protect the rim. And this is a well-coached team. Yeah. I'll tell you that. Well, Brown's guy fell over, and somebody helped on Brown, and that left Coleman Lands all by his lonesome. Second year in Division One, and I'd imagine they'd make some noise in the. In the whack before too long, and I'd like to see the team in the tournament before it's all said and done. Martin got all the way to the rim but did not score. And that'll be a foul on Brown. So 658 remaining in this one, and the Jayhawks starting to pull away, leading now by 16, despite the good move by Chicago. And Stephen Davis. 
Bob Sun will be calling the action along with Jill Dorsey. By the way, congratulations are due to Stephen. I read that he is now a, a full time employee and voice of a baseball team down in Arkansas. Excellent. Big shout yeah. out to Stephen Davis, who's actually a manager. Yeah. on uh, the men's <laughs> basketball team that I was on. He and I right? got a chance to get to know each other following the footsteps of, of course, Bob Davis. The legendary Bob Davis. The legendary. Not just in Kansas, but man, that guy used to call Royals games. I used to love listening to Royals games with yeah. Bob Davis calling them. I did too. Back in the day. So he and I both had that in common. And we both actually worked at KAYS in Hayes, Kansas, too. So I've just been following Bob around, you know. Good company. Picking up the scraps. Good company. Yep. And then foul down low, away from the action. And that's going to be on Bogues. That's only the second on Bogues. The Texans have three players with three fouls each. The Jayhawks have only committed four team fouls this half, but for Tarleton State, only two team fouls this half. Good poke away by Hopkins. He just picked the pocket of Remy Martin. A little bit of acting on that one and it's taking me a while to get used to that new hand that, signal. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, flop. new flopping rules, flop new area of emphasis. Yep. Certainly glad they're starting to yep. hunker down on that play. Something's gotten a little bit out of control at but the next why level. Why warning? Why warning? Why not just say, all right, yeah, that's a foul. You know, they're, they're warning them. Well, I don't like the warning in that particular. Yeah possession because we still have the basketball we still have an opportunity to score right if they flop and fall down on the ground we've got a five on four opportunity to score and in some ways you're penalizing the offense by the stop of the play a scoop shot from Dewan Harris Those are his first two points of the game. Brown. Abaji. That is good play. Defense at one end, offense at the other. Love to see defensive efforts like that turn into points on the other end. And the lead swells to 18. Hesitation and then a foul by Lightfoot. Wait, no. Is that offensive? Yeah, that's an offensive foul. That's going against Daniel. A little strange, right? I don't know which direction yeah. the official was pointing there. That's four on Daniel now. Gillespie not happy about that at all. He got him with a hook. So it's another turnover for Gillespie's Texans. the Kansas Jayhawks won't be as casual handling the basketball up front. I hadn't just gotten their pocket picked. McCormick. Good seal. Great good seal, find. But good patience by Ochai. Very easily could have took the early shot there over the defender, but was patient just long enough to David to walk him up the lane to get a better angle and feed him over the top for the easy dunk. Great job with David. As you can see him hip to hip, 
I don't know if you saw there, he kept his feet moving the entire time, which allows him to be able to be more active to go after to get that type of pass. I think had David not done good technique and not kept his feet moving, mm -hmm. that pass would have been over his head and out of bounds. But instead, he paid attention to detail and was able to get the easy score. By the way, McCormick was six points tonight, but more importantly, eight rebounds tonight. And six of those eight rebounds on the defensive end. If I'm Kansas, I'm going to continue to feed that guy. We want David to get into a good rhythm. We need him to build confidence on the offensive end. We know what he can do defensively. We're going to need to lean on him heavily to score baskets. Martin that time used the aggressiveness of Hopkins and went right right, right by him. One of the great ways you can match defensive pressure and aggression is to be just as aggressive offensively. We saw that there in that play. How about the line of Christian Brown tonight? 13 points, six rebounds, five block shots. I know that's got to be a career high for him. Great job penetrating, finding the open guy, and then also doing a solid job on the glass. Sometimes when your shots aren't falling like you want to, you have to find a way to contribute in other areas. CB's doing that now, and it builds confidence for you on the offensive end when you do get those shooting opportunities. 13 points on 5 of 9 shooting from the field, 1 of 3 from 3-point three line, 2 of 2 from the line, 6 rebounds, 5 assists, Five block shots. Wow, what a line for Christian Brown. And by the way, he has played more minutes than anyone except Ochayabaji for the Jayhawks here tonight. Hey, I keep him on the court too. That's that. <laughs> Harris. Stumbling, tossing it out of bounds. Coach Self not happy. He's, he could kind of read his lips over here. Says, Why did you do that? David was wide open. Yeah, a little careless on his part. One of the things that Coach Self is best at, drawing things up in timeouts. And man, when you do not execute, that's when he turns red. You know what? That's always, a good thing. There's so many things that are impressive about Coach Self, but one of the things that I'm always just stunned by is how he sees everything on the court. Like when I watch a game, I'm mainly, mainly am focused on where the ball is. But he sees everything off ball, who's, who's not in position off the corner, all of it. And there's a little trip inside. Martin will go to the line. He sees everything and he remembers everything. <laughs> He'll remind you about something that happened two or three possessions earlier that might not even be at the forefront of your mind, but uh, he'll certainly make sure he can turn into a teaching moment or get his point across if it's not done the way he wants it to be done. I think one of the most phenomenal things about him is his memory for names. He doesn't forget anybody. He'll meet them one time and he'll see them again 10 years later and remember their name. I don't know how he does it. It's a gift. Martin to line. Upset with himself for missing his first free throw in the Jayhawk uniform. Nearing the three minute mark. Brown yet another rebound. By the way, this will be the 49th straight opening victory at Allen Fieldhouse for the Jayhawks. That streak started when Ted Owens was coaching here. Ochai Abaji adds three more. He's now got 25 tonight. Coming off that 29-point performance against the Spartans. We appreciate streaks around here. Eventually they get broken, but we'll keep riding this wave as long as we can. Unbelievable. Love that gang rebounding. You see four white shirts attacking the glass. And then Martin will go back to the line. He's okay with that, but he's not happy that he didn't finish and get a three-point play out of it. Three 
Nice stop here. Defender going underneath the ball screen there for David McCormick, and that's another thing that Ochai Baji has added to his bag is being able to shoot that pull-up three off the dribble, more of a catch-and-shoot type of score as of years past, but has certainly been working hard to well round out his off offensive arsenal. And I'm sure Coach Gillespie said, why, why did you go under with Abaji? I mean, you can't do that with him. He's going to pull up and shoot. He did. I mean, Martin comes out at the 227 mark. And the Jayhawks they have this one well in hand now, up 24. Open look for small. These are still really valuable minutes for the Jayhawks here. I know we're getting ready to get into a sudden pattern to get most of our starters off the court, but valuable time here for guys like Joseph Yesifu and Bobby Pettifer Jr., Zach Kement, who are getting ready to see, check into the game here. I want to see this team finish out. Yes, Afu. See Tian and Jankovic. Crowd erupting, waiting for their mullet siding. <laughs> Two more from Brown on a nice alley oop. And Team is good. Jayhawks are really good this year, folks. And one. The depth you can play in a variety of ways play big, play small. Plenty of support at the point guard position, outside scoring with guys like Abaji and Brown and Coleman Lands and even Remy Martin. DeLon Harris can shoot from out there. The inside presence of McCormick, Lightfoot, and I think Zach Clements is going to be a guy that's going to develop as this year goes on as he, well. He, he really is, and he had a solid showing against Michigan State. This is the first time that we've seen him, and I know that it's late in the second half. But this is just a bad matchup team for him yeah, yeah. Uh, with five guards on the court and guys being able to dribble and handle the basketball. And so we'll see more of him uh, as of late. And, but I thought he's gotten off to a great start. More pressure on Tian in these games than anyone. Because everybody wants him to do just that. Everybody wants him to do just that. You've got to become a crowd favorite when you've been here as long as Tian. <laughs> a little known fact I hear that the player individual t-shirt sales i hear that he's actually leading that category really yeah fan favorite also has a caricature t-shirt coming out <laughs> on the other side of the oh. nil opportunities and i'm sure that's going to be a hot item as well does it have the mullet the teacher it's got a full, feature full mullet full, full mustache <laughs> why not and I know Coleman Lands has 10, 15 for Brown, uh, 14 for Remy Martin, and of course, Ochai Abaji with another stellar effort with 25 tonight for Abaji. And Tarleton State not backing off the pressure all the way to the last seconds of the game. Really points to what type of culture Billy Gillespie's trying to build here. Wow, a rainbow three from Clements. I think the peak of the arc on that ball was higher than the shot clock. Man, and up in the rafters. Man, the clock is frozen. It was stopped at 8.2. Now it's at 7.8. We're going to figure all this out. Well, we started the game with kind of a clock malfunction, and we end the game with a clock malfunction. 
the alpha and the omega of the clock. Well, I know there's a lot of buttons over there to be pushed, <laughs> a lot of things to be managed, so I'm not going to be. Oh, me either. I'm not going to be hard on that crew over there. I'm sure they're they're doing the best they can with what they got. Gives us a few more minutes to enjoy the Rock Chalk chant, does it? I love it. Love how it echoes through the rafters here. Well, that's going to do it. That last shot does not go. 88-62, the final.